All right, this is going to be part one of the Abomination of Desolation. Just remember something. There is a certain group in the Middle East that are intent on destroying all Islamic opposition to building a temple. Now, for those of you that don't know it, there is a temple replica in Brazil. And they actually used some of the stones that came from, I believe, uh, over in the Israeli state. You can read about it. Uh, it's supposed to be an exact replica of the temple in Brazil. Uh, I think it's San, San Paulo. And it took four years to build. Four years. I mean, can you imagine building a a full-size model replica of the temple in four years. And if the Brazilians can do it in four years, the Israelis could do it probably in less time. So there are two groups. There's the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute. Two groups that are fully committed to rebuilding the temple. And with all those wars in the Middle East against Iraq, against Afghanistan, probably Iran coming up, um, there's not going to be any country, Islamic country, Arabic country, that will be strong enough to oppose a building of the temple, uh, of a temple, if the Israelis decide that they want to build it. And I think they do. A lot of people tell me, oh, Bob, you're wrong. There's not going to be another temple. Well, guess what? Wait and see. We're going to find out, aren't we? Now, my opinion is this. I honestly believe that we're going to have another war with Iran and uh, the United States is going to do it. It'll, I don't know if it's going to, you know, the Iranians have watched what we've done in other countries. And I don't think they're going to lay down easily. I think they're going to fight. And um, I was in the army and we had a saying, you can't win a war without boots on the ground, which is, you know, a euphemism for uh, troops. So the, we're going to probably end up having to send the army over there. And the Iranians have a large army. And they're going to fight. They're not going to just lay down and, you know, there's going to be a lot of, probably a lot of bloodshed. But once Iran's gone, there'll be nobody in the Middle East with an army capable of opposing the rebuilding of a temple. And which, when you think about it, is a complete, total, utter denial of what Christ did on the cross. Total, total denial. It, it would be, to a Christian, it would be blasphemy. Of course, you'll never hear that on any of the uh, television stations, whether they be so-called Christian or not, like the 700 Prophets of Baal Club or the TBN or any of those groups of uh, supporters of the Antichrist, plural. So, but that's just my opinion. All right, so that's why um, I think why we're doing all these wars in the Middle East. All right, so let's go to the book of Daniel. And let's go to Daniel chapter 9. So I guess this is going to be part 1. We did had a, abominations. Uh, we did the intro. Now I guess this will going to be part 1. I Or technically it could be part 2. I don't know. Daniel chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, Sir, I don't know. 
A-H-A-S-U-E-R-U-S. Of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Now, believe it or not, these were the descendants of the Persians, who are the Iranians' descendants. They actually conquered Babylon, that took originally took the uh, Israel, uh, Judah rather, it, Judah into captivity, into Babylon. The Medes, the Chaldeans, and the Persians came in, conquered the Babylonians, and they were kind to the children of Judah and Jerusalem and allowed them to return, allowed them to take all the things from the temple, all the gold, all the silver, all the furniture, and they allowed them to go back to Jerusalem, rebuild the wall, and rebuild the temple. Yeah, they were kind to them. The modern-day Iranians are the descendants of these people that we're reading about, the Persians. And they were kind to Judah. So why do we want to destroy them? Good question. All right, so, uh, verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years wherein the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. And if you want to read about the Babylonian destruction, you read Jeremiah. Uh, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. All right, so Babylonians came in, destroyed everything. They went into captivity for 70 years. The Lord said by Jeremiah, at the end of 70 years, they would return. And it's exactly what happened. 70 years later, the Persians came in, the modern-day descendants of the Iranians, came in, conquered Babylon, and allowed Judah to return. You can read about that in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. All right, verse 3. Uh, Daniel was greatly beloved. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fastings. I'm sorry, fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Daniel was deprived himself of food and sat in sackcloth, uncomfortable clothing and ashes. He wasn't in a three-piece suit or a tuxedo looking unto the Lord. He was humbling himself. Verse 4, And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant. See, God kept the covenant. It was Israel and Judah, two separate entities, that did not keep the covenant. They're the ones that broke the covenant, not the Lord. I mean, let's face it. You go to a car dealer. You make a, a covenant with them or what they call a contract. I'm going to give you a down payment, make payments to you. You give me the car. Well, guess what? You don't make the payments that you promised, the contract. They come and repo the car. Well, that's what God did to Israel and Judah. He basically repossessed them and said, yep, you guys don't want my laws? No problem. You can go live under the Babylonians and their laws. See how you like it. O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Verse 5, Daniel says, We have sinned. You could say the same thing about America and Europe today. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened or listened. Neither have we larkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, 
but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off. You see, there were those that were near to Daniel and then there was Israel that was far off. Why? Because years earlier, before the Babylonians came, the Assyrians came and took Israel captive and sent them all over the place. And they, they left. They went, well, if you want to know where Israel went, they went north. Look at a map of the Middle East and look north and find out where you're going to end up. Uh, Europe. That's where you end up. You know, the place where they printed the Bibles that honored Christ, the places that built churches, you know, like Notre Dame, uh, those, those kind of places. They didn't go south to Sub-Sahara Africa. Sorry. That's not what happened. And to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespasses, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness that we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have trans transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. I believe that was in Numbers 33. I did a, a thing on the the blessings and the curses. And uh, these curses are coming upon us today. We're, going, we're being ruled by the worst of the heathen. That's why Europe and America is being flooded with heathens. I'm not allowed to mention certain words. Uh, Tube uh, finds that as hate speech and will delete these things. So... Uh, if you want to know where the flood of the heathens coming from, take a look uh, south of the land of Israel. Look in the middle of that continent, uh, among other places. Look in South America, the flood of the heathens. Verse 12. And he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn, turn, turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Yeah, people, we're supposed to turn from our iniquity. 14. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. All right, I'm going to, let's see, verse 15. And now, O Lord our God, that hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and hast gotten thee renowned, as at this day we have son, sinned, we have sinned, and we have done wickedly. All right, we're going to come back to this. I'm splitting these Bible studies up into 15-minute groups so that I can put it on other sites besides uh, the tube, which keeps deleting my uh, studies. All right, um, if I disappear from the tube, look for me on uh, minds.com and bitshoot, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. All glory to Jesus. Amen.